Hey, Tim from Las Vegas Scooters and Lifts again. Today I want to talk about vehicle lifts for your scooter and power wheelchair. Here's some of the um, questions you might have about vehicle lifts. Uh, your vehicle and getting a lift put in on, on the vehicle so you could lift a, a scooter or a power wheelchair. So there's a couple of factors involved with that. So if you do want to get a lift for your vehicle, first of all, there's a couple of things you need to do is make year model of vehicle, make model scooter, three or four wheel, that doesn't matter in this case. So if you've got a three wheel, the platform may be different, four wheel, maybe you can get a uh, addition to a platform that makes it uh, compatible with a four wheeler, whether it's a power chair or a scooter. So you need to have these, these bits of information to hand if you do go into a store or buy something online or call up a dealer to see if you've got something that uh, may work on your vehicle. So the other things you need, make model year of vehicle, make a model of scooter or power wheelchair, because it all factors in to whether you can get a lift on your vehicle. Now, what they refer to or refer when you uh, do, we do checks on your vehicle and scooter to see if it's compatible, all the websites, I'm not sure about Bruno, we're not Bruno dealers, a bit of a backstory to that, but uh, we are Harmar dealers. We used to be Pride dealers, but they sold out to Harmar, so we're just basically Harmar dealers now. We're not Bruno dealers, but uh, it pertains to basically all lifts. And uh, what you need to be looking for is the tow capacity, tongue weight of your vehicle. And it's very important that you get it matched correctly. Now, if you've got something like a sedan, a small less a uh, small sedan then there's more than likely a a 99 to 100 percent chance you won't get a lift on that vehicle you do see them on the road where people have put them on themselves or some unscrupulous dealers have put them on vehicles there's a high risk of the weight of the lift the swing away and the scooter or wheelchair being too heavy for that vehicle and it will affect your vehicle in the long term and what it will affect is the suspension the framework the cooling system the drive system as in your transmission and all that kind of good stuff it will wreck your car the best thing to do is if you have an suv or larger some crossovers you can get away with but like I said, just go onto the manufacturer's websites and see if it's compatible. And when a customer comes in or calls us, we check those factors to see if their vehicle is compatible with taking a lift. Because if you think about it, the lift, average weight of a lift is around about the 85 to 90 to 95 pound in weight. Swing away, around about 45 pounds. So you're getting up there in 100 pound of weight. Now, you men I mentioned earlier, now I mentioned earlier, tongue weight. Now, your car may, or SUV, whatever it is you've got, it may have a tow capacity of a thousand pounds, fifteen hundred pounds, that's all well and good, that's towing. Now, towing is totally different to tongue weight. Towing, basically, is with a supported axle being towed behind the vehicle on a ball hitch. That's that round ball-y thing that you see hanging out the back of trucks and things like that. Now, it's that ball hitch is where the tongue weight is ca calculated. Now, most ma manufacturers that sell these lifts, they, they use a 10 to 20% of the towing capacity to calculate your tongue weight. The best way to figure that out is go to your owner's manual for your vehicle and look under towing under the section towing now not towing as in being towed by a tow truck but towing a trailer now if you have a vehicle 
Look at that section in your owner's manual. If it's a sedan, then 99% of the time, they'll say, do not tow with this vehicle in there. And that will give you a great indication to whether you can get anything on the back of your car. People do it and it's detrimental to the car. So I recommend not doing it. Unfortunately, I've seen in the past where we've installed lifts for people, they've bought the wrong car and uh, they've had to go out and rebuy a new car. A gentleman's coming in today. He's had the same issue. His car had a lift on it prior to having an accident, the insurance claim this was, and he had an old, older, it was only two years old, I believe, and it was uh, one of the pride lifts and it was one of their lightweight lifts and it just was compatible with his car and his scooter at the time and it was the uh, tm which is uh, i've actually got one in the store it's what it looks like just here if i move this relator out of the way that that's called the tm and it was made by pride and they uh, sold them all to harmar and they remanufactured them and that's his lift there and they they changed and put all their uh, gear on it basically as you can see it's bent the platform but uh, that's by and the by somebody ran into it and i said it's not worth fixing because the different things that could happen to the drive mechanism there are only nylon gears in the motor uh, it could affect the auger and if you put a new platform on it and then something else breaks down the line while well, it's out of warranty it's going to be an expensive fix it's best to just total it out and buy a new lift so that's uh, what I, I did for him luckily it was covered under his insurance the guy that hit him just drove away hit and run um, irresponsible shouldn't do that he was actually in the car when he hit him uh, the, the truck obviously didn't even know he'd hit him. Reversed into the lift while the lift was down. Luckily, his scooter didn't get damaged. He's actually got a ZT8. And, uh, yeah, so he's looking to get a new lift. But his car, his original car, was just at the threshold of carrying his scooter on that vehicle with that lift. But now... They discontinued that lift. There is nothing of that size for him, for his scooter, with that lifting capacity. So it's a matter of lift, scooter, do they match? Is the lifting capability of the lift able to lift that lift, uh, lift that scooter? And it wasn't the case. He had to get a, a bigger, stronger lift with a heavier lifting capacity. The lifting capacity on the TM was only 150. So he had to, he got the ZT, the ZT8 which is a heavier scooter and it wasn't compatible with that lift so uh, the only one he could get was the AL100 which is step up so we're going to install that today that's all buying a buy but yep this is the reasons that uh, you go out and get advice from a dealer about your scooter your vehicle and we see a lot of the times when we get calls in the store Nine times out of ten, it's somebody with a sedan and they can't get a lift on there. And they complain to us, why not? Why not? It's because your vehicle's not strong enough to tow anything. Simple as that. So SUV or larger trucks are fine. It's all dependent. There's several different types of lifts. I could put some pictures up on the screen around about there somewhere just to give you a variation of uh, what kinds of lifts there are like uh, crane lifts, internal lifts, external lifts. There are carriers, that's something else I'll go into. That's just like a metal carrier that goes on the back of the vehicle. You see that a lot on cars, sedans, that sort of thing. People can buy them for two to three hundred dollars on eBay, Craigslist, wherever. And again, they're heavy bits of kit. I think you're probably looking 50 to 80 pounds maybe for a steel ramp kind of uh, carrier again very heavy very cumbersome to use especially here in las vegas summertime 120 degrees outside and you're manhandling this ramp and your scooter or power wheelchair up and down and to push it up and down these ramps there uh, they look good on paper but in reality we've actually tried selling these before 
And nine times out of ten, uh, people that bought them, brought them back and just traded them in for an electric lift because it's so much con more convenient to use the electric lift to uh, lift your scooter or power chair up because it's all automatic. You don't have to do any manhandling of anything. So uh, just be wary. If you're physically able and fit to do a ramp, then fine. Make sure you get a, a, a proper ramp, a ramp that actually can actually work with your vehicle because the biggest factor with the manual ramps are the ramps themselves, is how steep the ramps are. Now on the back of these scooters, I'll go to this uh, Ultra X, and the biggest factor we found with these ramps is the degree of angle of the ramp off the back of the vehicle. So if it's a steep angle like that, you're going to have trouble pushing your scooter or power chair. If it's a heavy power chair, even worse. They struggle getting up the ramp. So you, you can use power, but nine times out of ten, what happens on scooters? You have the little anti-tip wheels at the back, the trailing wheels, and they lift these wheels off the floor when they get to a certain angle. I'll try and do it for you, I'll try and lift. So as I'm tipping, those tipping wheels are now on the ground, and as you go up, those rear wheels are off the ground. So you end up having to push. It won't use the motor to push it up the ramp. So at a certain angle of ramp, it's gonna to be too much for the scooter. It's too low to the ground. You uh, risk damaging underneath the scooter, and also risk damaging yourself trying to push it up the ramp. And once you've got it on the ramp and it does fit and it goes up, then you're going to need ratchet straps to secure the seat, the battery pack and the scooter all down. And that's adding more time to loading and unloading. So you've got to factor that into your equation. Are you physically able to do it? And. Uh, there, there are other kind of ramps that people will also inquire about to also over the phone and come in the store. And these are the like aluminum folding, aluminium folding ramps. They're like trifold, bifold, this sort of thing. I'll show you a picture here. This is a great example. This is what we get people asking for. Can I get a folding ramp, suitcase ramp to go in the back of my vehicle like that? Well, yeah, you can get one, but you've got to think about once you've got your scooter in there as you can see with this picture they've got the seat folded up where's the ramp going to go once you've got the scooter in there you're going to put it on your nice leather back seats and rip them open yeah again they don't work as you can see with that picture look at the height of that ramp that's how steep it is it's uh, <laughs> not convenient and it's very difficult to use and then you've got to lift a a 35, 45 pound ramp, depending on the height of the vehicle. There are ADA rules that uh, when you buy ramps, threshold ramps, that kind of thing, that there's a certain length that you have to buy or we have to sell. If somebody says, I've got a five inch step I need to get a ramp for. Now, there's two factors there. Is it powered or is it manual? So if you have a manual wheelchair or a powered wheelchair, there's two factors, two things that we are uh, results that you get. So if it's five inch rise and it's a manual wheelchair, then you'll need five foot of ramp. It's for every one inch, the ADA say it has to be one foot of ramp. If it's powered, power wheelchair or power scooter, you half it. It's only for one inch is uh, six inches of ramp. So it's half, it's not one inch, one foot, it's one inch, six inches. So if you have a two inch rise, you'll need a one foot ramp because it's being powered. You're not having to manually push the chair up. So that's how you work out your threshold ramp and your ramp. So if you've got a vehicle with, I don't know, two feet from the ground, which is, you know, some SUVs can be that, that high, and you've got to manually push that chair up or push that scooter up, Technically, by the ADA recommendations, you'll need a 20-foot ramp or a 24-foot ramp. Now, with those also, with any ramp, over a 10 feet of length, you need a handrail. Go figure. So people do it. People do pull those ramps on, on their uh, vehicles. 
and I'm sure it's a pain in the butt. I used to have one of these, one of these kind of ramps for loading scooters into our truck. Absolute pain in the butt. The ramps are heavy. They rip everything up. Rip the back of my truck up. I had bed liner in it. It ripped that apart, sliding in and out of the truck. They're heavy. They're pain in the butt. I know powered lifts are expensive and it's all down to budget with a lot of people, but uh, it's your health. Because if you don't get out, you don't get enjoying your life, then we did this with our parents. We, it's not like we had a lot of money, but we bought the things that were necessary to make my mother's life easier and our life easier. Because we were having to lift power wheelchairs in and out of a people carrier, as they call it in the UK, which is a uh, soccer mum car. I don't know what they call them over in the minivans. There you go. Yeah, we were lifting something like that, this monstrosity, in and out of the uh, minivan, and it was absolutely killing us. There was nothing available in the UK. I'm not sure if there is now. It's been 10 years since I've been back to uh, good old blighty. But yeah, it was a pain in the butt for us, and we didn't want to go out because our life and peace of mind was getting torn apart just so my mother could go to the doctors or the shopping mall or whatever she needed to do. It, my dad couldn't do it and it was getting to the point where we would, didn't want to do it and couldn't do it. So if there was lifts available we would have put one on our, on our van just to give my mother a piece of life back. We had to get the things that were correct for what we needed. Things like bath lifts toilet lifts, you know, these things are designed to help the person that has the disability and also the people that are caring for somebody with a disability, like us, you know, we were in our 40s, late, late 30s, 40s, and we didn't want to do it, we didn't want to do these things, there are these products out there to make your life better. And unfortunately, they're expensive because the technology that go into these things, they're not cheap. It takes years and years of research and development to go into these. Uh, then they have to go stringent tests uh, for all these things. And they've been designed over the years to be better, to make your life better. So, vehicle lifts. Do the checks, check your vehicle. Check with your dealer, see what you can get on your vehicle. Don't try and install these yourself. You can if you're technically minded and you feel competent to install them. I've been doing these for years. I can do them with my eyes closed now. They're not too complicated to install, but you can go out on the internet and I do the same. When I buy things on the internet, I look for the cheapest. I'm so tired, I squeak when I walk. So. Yeah, don't always think that cheapest is best. Okay, going into some other kind of vehicle lifts that you can get. Um, it's all dependent on which vehicle you have. Again, like I said earlier, we'll match the vehicle with the scooter and then it will give you a, a, a different kind of lifts you can get, like I showed in the pictures earlier. Crane lifts, I think they're great for if you have a minivan again, or even a truck with a bed, or even a covered bed, something like that, a larger SUV, you can fit those. As long as they don't have a false floor, you're usually pretty good. Most of the time with those kind of lifts, they are invasive. In other words, you will have to drill into the vehicle to attach them to the vehicle. But uh, it's all dependent on what you want to do. If you have a leased vehicle, then maybe check with the lease to see if you're able to put something in that, in that vehicle. But if you're in the vehicle outright, then you should be good to go as long as you don't mind drilling into the vehicle. And those kind of lifts, are, again, I'll show it on the screen about there. And it's like a crane lift. And they come in what they call axis. So it's all depending on what sort of function you want that lift to do whether it's a two-axis lift, manual uh, swing lift, 
You, they're, they're all mainly uh, electric. There's never a hand wind one, so they're all electric, but sometimes they uh, they come in two axis, three axis, and basically all that is is where the lift actually turns and rotates to, sometimes they all go down, that's one axis. So it's all down to the axis of the lift, and what they mean by axis is up and down, left and right, in and out. So you have those three axes. Two axes is just in and out, up and down. So that's your two axes. In other words, the lift swings into the vehicle and swings down. So you can load the uh, scooter or wheelchair into into your vehicle. Uh, you do get manual ones, which are a little cheaper, but again, you have to assemble those. And some, if not all of them, you have to remove the seats off of scooters to attach the um, attachment to lift the scooter inside the vehicle and fold the tiller down and so on and so forth. So it's all whatever you want for convenience wise and what vehicle you have. As they go into manual to three axis, then you get more and more expensive, but it depends on your physical disabilities to whether you can actually push the whole thing in if you only go for a two axis. Uh, whether you go for the single axis crane lift, as I call them, to whether you can push those into the vehicle if you're physically able to do that. The manual ones, like I said, there's some they attach to the trailer hitch of a vehicle, usually SUVs and larger, some crossovers, as long as you've got the tongue weight to accommodate that weight of the scooter and the lift and the, all the metal work that goes with it. it uh, you have to assemble those and take them off when you're done with them. So they're kind of, uh, for smaller vehicles, lighter weight, but they are, you're having to lift things again, so it's, kind of counterintuitive if you have a scooter that comes apart you might as well just take it apart and lift it because you're having to lift the weight of the uh, the crane itself the motor mechanism and everything but uh, yeah but you can get static ones like i said that are in 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 situ in the rear of the uh, car or suv in a motor that case and also in a truck truck bed as well they're, they're fixed in position so, so you can get them for manual wheelchairs all the way up to heavy duty uh, wheelchairs as well so it's just a matter of what you want it to do and how you want it to do it and your disabilities i've actually put a video out uh, not long ago about the new al6000 lift which is what they call a hybrid lift which goes internally into the uh, vehicle i'll put a link in the description below link into that video so you can see that lift in up in in action and how it works it's like a comes out of the vehicle and drops like a forklift would drop straight down so you can load and unload this scooter great lift again they're a little bit more expensive but you have a minivan then it's perfect for that situation and nine times out of ten it's non-invasive again you don't have to screw it into the vehicle everything you get with the kit is there to bolt it into the existing metalwork of the frame so you, there's no screws that you have to drill into it or anything like that takes around about six to seven hours to install and get it set correctly so definitely consider somebody doing that for you who's experienced in installing lifts but if you do if you find that you can do something like that then give it a try it will save you some save you some dollars on installation most of the time we don't charge for installation or we'll give you that discount if you buy a scooter and a lift from us we'll we'll install whatever for free so that's always a, a good positive for us and also the customer so they're getting a good deal package some places they, they can charge quite a bit to install lifts now uh, yeah, all down to your vehicle. So moving on to something different, it's uh, thresholds. I was talking earlier around uh, about ramps that go into vehicles, which I showed you this one. These are mainly for thresholds. That's what I would use them for, as you can see in this picture where you have a step into your home and you need to get in. Same as that one, they're all the same picture, but if you have two or three steps like that, then that's what these ramps are predominantly used for. You do get low-rise threshold ramps like these three here. 
that's the rubber one nice non-slip rubber uh, uh, threshold ramp they do come in different sizes to accommodate different sizes of threshold i did have a, a display hat stand that i made up here that we could show you different sizes but yeah they go from reasonable prices you know from about 50 60 bucks all the way up to depending on which length of ramp you want, ramp you want so it's all depending on how much of a step you have again it's the ada that uh, they put out the a minimum requirement of what you need ramp wise again if it's manual then you would need one inch of rise would need one foot of ramp if it's powered one inch of rise six inches of ramp so measure your measure your step from top to bottom where the ramp would actually go onto the step as you can see there to the ground to where it falls to where the bottom of the ramp would actually sit and that's how you would work out your ramp sizes but if you've got any questions drop them in the comments and i'll answer and help you out and point you in the right right direction we do uh, use two companies i believe for our ramps it used to be pride but they've gone away from that so easy access we find is the best and have the best availability and they're in washington which is just north well quite north from us but it's closer than any east coast so we tend to use them a lot there's also another company called pvi they also supply ramps as well so and i do believe maybe harmar may have a couple of ramps that we could probably get them. so check with your dealer see what they have available uh, available in their in their area easy access i think is one of the one of the biggest uh, companies that you can get ramps for as well as pvi you see them on the uh, on quite a few uh, online shopping places but make sure you get the right size and what you want it to do there's quite a few different kind of ramps you can get this solid ramp trifold bifold and basically all that is so you can fold them up or you can have them static we also do things like uh, what's called the passport which is actual like a, a proper elevator lift as we call it in the uk where you can actually go from quite a high, a low level to a high level so there are things like that as well as uh longer ramps like i said anything over 10 feet you would need a handrail like that so if you live in like a manufactured home or a, a mobile home or something like that you would need a, a longer ramp then definitely you would need a handrail so uh, that's what the the law states over here so so give your dealer a call they'll help you out as best as they can as we would and we also do stair lifts as well we don't install them ourselves due to the regulations here in nevada we can't install them ourselves we have to have an elevator license to install those but we do sell them and we use a third party to, to go and install them for us so but yeah and with stair lifts it's all dependent on your staircase basically if it's a straight run staircase then they're quite common and they're quite quick to install and easy to use so it's all dependent on your weight and uh, your staircase so because if you get a spiral staircase obviously it's going to be more expensive more to it and they can go up in the tens of thousands they can so it's all down to your home and what you need it to do but like I said, any questions, drop them in the comments and we'll answer as best as we can. Uh, prices, well, if you don't live in here in Las Vegas, there's no point in giving you a price. Ask your local local dealer what uh, what they can provide for you and get a price from them. So if, if you're here in Las Vegas, please reach out to us, email us or call us. All the information's in the uh, description below. So, yep, from another sunny day here in Las Vegas. Obviously, this video has been over quite a few months, so inventory's changed. My dress is, my uh, clothing's changed as well. So, but yeah, I'm just tying up this video so I can uh, put it out online just to give you a few, little bit of an insight into vehicle lifts and things like that. So, till next time, like I said, drop your questions in the comments, I'll answer them and also like share and also give us that subscribe it means a lot to us and it keeps this channel going and we appreciate it so till next time have a good one and bye now